Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. Today I thought we could have a wander around and check out how my fruit and nut trees are going now that it's midsummer. One of my plum trees has plums that are just nearly ripe, but the birds are already devouring them. So hang around to the end of the video and join me to harvest what's left of them. Most of my fruit and nut trees were planted about three and a half years ago into freshly constructed swales. Over this period there's been a lot of growth, but the soil is still being developed from one adapted to pasture grass to a soil that one day will be perfect for the fruit and nut trees. It is a work in progress. Some trees are going really well, but others are struggling. I'm hoping over time as my skills in developing the system improve and the growing conditions change, all of the trees will flourish. We're going to start the look around up here in the top swale with my apricot guild. Now the apricot trees have been growing well. This one actually looks like it could do with a little bit of water, but I, I'm trying not to water them just so that they become um, a bit more resilient and hopefully the roots will stretch down to, to where the swale has sunk the water to. These trees have not produced any fruit and I don't know whether it's just my pruning. I have had neighbours report the same thing that their apricot trees haven't been producing well at the moment. Now this is my end apricot and it does have this tagasasti that I've shown in chop and drop videos and it could actually do with some more chopping. We've got really hot days at the moment so I might hold off but as soon as it looks like it's cooling down, I'll be out here to harvest a bit more mulch and lay it down to improve the soil for my apricot tree. Now I know they're not fruit or nut trees, but this is my raspberry patch, which I showed in a video with transplanting raspberries. Now they did have a, a bit of a slow start and were mowed down by cows, which is a recurring theme around here but they look like they've um, regrouped nicely. I've just gone through and did a chop and drop mulching with the grasses that are around, but I've got fruit coming on some of them. So I'm kind of pleased given what they've been through with how they're going. Just wandering down the swale a little bit now, we've got my other two apricots just behind me here. This one once again could do with some uh, decent pruning but it's got plenty of uh, leaf on it and plenty of growth up the top. So hopefully next season, once I've done some homework on how to prune properly, this tree will become productive. This is my third apricot tree and this tree doesn't show any of the signs of needing uh, a water. Looks like it's got its roots right into the swale berm and it's put on a heap of growth this season. As with all my fruit and nut trees, down below this covering layer, we've got lots of the, the woody mulch that's just slowly breaking down. And you can see the soil surface down there is still has quite a bit of moisture in it. So I'll just cover that back up again. Just on the lower side of the berm now, rather than walking along the swale itself, we come along to one of my peaches. Now this is a peach tree that really had a lot of curly leaf issue and it still doesn't look as healthy as my other two peaches. Now I'm sneaking through my berm, past some gooseberries, and jury some artichokes that are dotted around the place. Now over this side of the berm with the swale just on my right here, I've got my healthiest peach tree. And this was the peach that had heaps of fruit last year. And I think the reason that it doesn't have for heaps of fruit this year is because of my pruning. I think I just chopped down everything without any regard for where the fruit was going to grow. So this season, I might just clear some space in the middle, but I'm gonna leave most of this growth and see how we go for fruit next season. Now, just wandering down the swale a little bit, we've got my third peach tree. Now, because of my poor pruning, this one too didn't produce the fruit that I was hoping it might have. 
but once again I'm going to clear branches in the center of the tree but essentially leave all this new growth because that's what I believe the fruit will be growing on next season. This tree was affected with curly leaf and I'm kind of hesitant to use anything to treat it but I'll be doing some research and sort of decide before the leaves come out in spring. As you can see my apricot and peach tree guilds have really put on a heap of growth in spring and summer and there's lots of chop and drop material that I'll be able to harvest come autumn. I have just the one nectarine tree which is this tree just behind me here and it suffered the same fate as my other stone fruits with the poor pruning. So it didn't, it had a couple of fruit on it to start with but they all dropped off and like the peach trees it's put on heaps of growth so I'll be clearing out the centre once again and leaving all these beautiful uh, branches to hopefully produce fruit next season. Here on the lower side of my swale berm, I've got the first of my olive trees. It's putting on good growth, but no signs of fruit just yet. I think these trees have been in probably three years. So hopefully once they get established, I'll be getting some uh, olives that I can harvest. Plenty of wattle in bloom at the moment, which is keeping our pollinators happy. This olive tree here was the smallest olive tree that I planted, but finally it's starting to put on some growth. It's um, in a really nice protected spot here with some hakeas and the acacias surrounding it. Come autumn, I'll be chopping the surrounding trees a little bit to give this tree a bit more sunlight and see if we can get it growing even better. And now we come to my two hazelnut trees that are up here in this swale. This tree has yet to produce any nuts and I can't see any on it at the moment. Again, most of the trees on this swale are about um, three and a half years in the ground. So for nut trees, it's still kind of in the getting established stage, but I'm hoping that uh, very soon this tree will start to produce. But next to it here is the first hazelnut tree that I've had nuts from. I didn't even realize last season it was growing nuts. And to my surprise, in autumn, I found some just on the ground. So there's a few good nuts developing on this tree. So I'll be certainly onto harvesting them come autumn. Just here is one of my olive trees that I featured in a chop and drop video recently. I still haven't been back out here to straighten this tree up, but it shouldn't take much effort just to tie that back to the acacia so that it's growing a bit straighter. So I'll certainly get to doing that. And I'll show you my other olive tree just over the other side. Again, I need to tie this tree back, although it does look like it's straightened a little just with trimming of this tree next to it. From my olive trees, we just move up and across the berm to where I've got two of my pear trees. These also featured in a video about cherry slug. Now, the tree actually put on quite a bit of growth, which it never did last season. I did do a lot of treatment around the base of the tree to help prevent the uh, sawfly larva emerging to lay its eggs. And I think that did its job. Uh, I believe that the sawfly probably came from other trees in the area and laid their eggs because this, this tree last year was devoid of any leaves. So even though it's got quite a few cherry slugs on it, which I'll be coming around and just dusting with ash to dry those off, this tree looks a lot better than it did last year. This is my second pear tree, which again has some of the cherry slug damage happening on it, but once again, this tree didn't have any leaves on it at all this time last year. So I really feel my cherry slug treatment did the job. I'll be coming around, as I said, with the other tree and just throwing some ash over these leaves 
and that should kill off any of these larva. These almond trees have certainly grown really well, but trying to keep the moisture up to them in summertime has been the challenge so far. In one of my recent videos, I did mention that I've got to uh, level out my swale a bit more so water collects here and hopefully hydrates this berm better to better accommodate the moisture needs of the uh, almond trees. So they're quite solid trees and the roots should be down deep enough. So that's why I'm thinking that the, uh, the moisture is just not getting down into the berm. Just here is a mulberry tree that I planted through the year. It is in a very uh, challenging spot here and gets hit with a bit of wind. And I've also just got to keep the water up to it during the hot summers, which has been drying it out. So it's a bit of a challenge sometimes getting these trees growing. There's a bit of growth coming on the tree. So hopefully if I keep the water up to it, we'll get this one established. Now just over here, we've got my orange tree, which produced its first orange last season. So let's have a look and see how it's going for this season. Being tucked in next to this native, I'm not sure if it's a dogwood or what that tree is, but they've formed a good partnership. This orange tree is well protected and is looking quite happy. It's got lots of growth on it. I haven't watered it at all. So it's just what it can collect out of the, uh, the berm itself. And it's got plenty of fruit coming along. So this is one of the success stories. Just here, I've got the avocado tree that has grown from the root stock. This was the original tree that died at the hands of frost and sheep. And this little tree has sprouted out. Now the root system is down into the, the soil well enough to, to get its own moisture. So it's growing well with the warmth we've got at the moment. And just over here in this little tent is the first of the two avocados that I've planted during spring. So I haven't been watering it as diligently as I should have, but it's still alive, so that is good. I have started to put reminders out for myself to make sure that um, I do do the watering to get it established. But given that it hasn't had the water it's really needed, I think it's going okay. This is the other avocado that I've planted in spring. And it is showing signs of uh, lacking a bit of moisture. So I'll have to get up here a bit more often and add some water to these plants. Now what I've done here is actually cut these swales through existing pasture where it wasn't growing any trees. So with establishing these, we really have to change the, the soil itself for these trees to get going well. The swale will help with hydration, but all these support trees have got to add to the soil and change that soil profile for these trees to really get going well. So that's what we're still working on. And the final tree up here in my top swale is this mulberry tree, which just hasn't ever been really happy. I think the soil just mustn't be right for it just yet. So I'm gonna persist with the mulching and changing the soil and hopefully this tree will become a lot happier in years to come. Moving now from the top swale, we'll go on and have a look at what I call my bottom swale. The first tree down here on my bottom swale is one of my walnut trees. Now it's getting some new growth on it up the top there. I'm sure these trees would benefit from having some irrigation to them, but they've got none. They're kind of on their own, and hopefully that means they'll send their roots down deeper and access the moisture that is available to them, and that they become a bit more resilient as the years go by. Not far from my first walnut tree, I've got the second tree, which is a little less exposed. It's got a bit more uh, support from trees around it. And it certainly doesn't look as stressed for moisture as my other tree. 
Now I do have this protection around it which I might have to remove soon or expand. I'm a bit hesitant because my cows tend to get out because of uh, management and they like to nibble down trees so I'd hate for them to take down this uh, walnut tree that's doing quite well. Now let's have a look at my macadamias in these weird little tents I've got them in. But once again, it did protect them from cows and it has protected them from frost in the winter. So it's certainly done its job. So this tree is looking really healthy in here. I will come through with some water just to help them get through the dry summer. And I might actually have to make these frost protection structures just a little bit bigger uh, as they grow. And over the other side of the berm, I've got my other macadamia tree and another one of these frost protection structures that do look a bit weird, but I just threw it together with what I had. But they've both done the job, so as long as they do the job, right? So let's have a look in here and see if we can check this tree out. And once again, the tree is looking pretty healthy. And now we've got to the first of our four apple trees. This one is a Granny Smith tree. It did have a couple of apples on it, but that one's... Something's gone on with that one. That's all soft. But it has one more apple on it. So hopefully that will get through to harvest. I haven't harvested any fruit from the apple trees down on this swale as yet. I'm hoping that this will be the first season. There has been a little bit of bird or animal pressure, but this tree, which is a Cox's Orange Pippin, has quite a number of fruit on it. I'd love to see how it goes without netting the tree. I might actually come through and just put a bag over some of it. And I'll be also coming through and giving these a bit more of a prune to open up the centre and just um, sort of create more of a buzz-like structure. Moving away from my Cox's Orange Pippin, down the boom a little bit towards the dam, we've got another variety of apple tree which is called a Frequin Rouge and it's more a cider apple. Once again, it looks like we've got some critter pressure or birds and I might come through and just net a few of these so I actually get to, to try some of them. But it's got quite a few apples on it this season, which again is its first season with fruit on it. Moving through to our fourth and final apple. Now this one is a bonza apple. It did have a few fruits on it, but we've just got the one remaining. And uh, yeah, I'll have to uh, definitely come cover that over because it's supposed to be a really great tasting apple. Now this tree did struggle. It's in really challenging soil at the moment so I've been working hard at getting the mulch down but it all takes time to uh, make those changes that will benefit the trees. Well that's the first two swales done. Let's go over to our bottom swale and we'll check out and see what the trees are doing there. Now starting at the south end of my roadside swale we have the first of my two almond trees now these were planted uh, sort of a year and a half two years after most of the plantings were made so these aren't very old trees they have got some pest pressure and cow pressure these are often grazed a little bit as the cows push through my fencing but given all of that it's not looking too bad you can see with this almond tree, compared to the almonds on my top swale, it's still got most of the leaves and looks a lot more lush than those trees, which is due to this swale holding quite a lot of water for most of the year. And this is the second tree. Again, the leaves are actually holding on the tree. Just here, I've got a little pineapple guava or a fajoa that I planted back in spring and it's actually starting to get uh, nice growth happening on it. It was sort of 
down here when I first put it in. So I'm really happy with how it's starting to get going. Now my quince tree here, which has had a number of challenges, looks really fantastic in spring with plenty of blossoms. And I thought for sure we were going to get some fruit, but it seems to have got this black spot happening on it, which is a fungal disease often caused by lots of moisture, which is what we had in spring. And it just sort of took over the tree. It's got some um, new growth coming on it now. But if you spray with fungicides, the fungicides that work can't eat the fruit. And being permaculture, I don't want to do that anyway. I'm just going to leave this tree, see if it can work itself out. And if it doesn't, I'll just get rid of the tree. And I might plant some more quinces somewhere else. These are the culprits who often get out and eat my trees. Yes, you. It's a pretty hot day today and everyone's just taking it easy in the shade. Hello, little Daisy. Now here's a tree that I'm really happy with. It's been in the ground, I think this is its third season and this is the third season it's producing fruit, but it's actually got massive on it. It's really doubled in size in just this last year. And I'm looking forward to a, a mega big harvest. Now this one's called a heart leaf fig and you can sort of see the reason why it might have got that name. But it's got a heap of fruit on it. At the start of the season, back in spring, I did show you guys the leaves and they all looked a bit deformed. See this one here is kind of representative of what a lot of the leaves looked like. But it really hasn't held this tree back from exploding in growth and uh, producing all of these fruit. Now it will still be a couple of months before the fruit start to ripen and um, I'm pretty excited because these fruit are absolutely delicious. Right next to the Hartley fig I've got my rescue fig which is a bit of a freeloader really. Maybe it was dumped by the side of the road because it wasn't producing any fruit. It certainly produced heaps of growth, but no fruit whatsoever. And I don't know what excuse it has. I might have to do some research and see if it's likely to produce any fruit. Um, I can use it for chop and drop if I need to. And if I do need the space, I'll just remove it if it's uh, not going to produce anything. That brings us to my cherry tree, which again hasn't had any fruit yet, but that's okay. We're working up to it and we're getting the pruning skills done. I will have to again clear the centre of this tree, but this year I'm going to be leaving all these to see if I can get some fruit happening on it. It does have a bit of impact by cherry slug. Once again, I did do the cherry slug treatment here. And once again, I feel it was really successful because this plant's actually put on quite a bit of growth this year. Whereas last year, it was eaten down before it could even grow. Just along from my cherry tree, I've got my blooming granite shrub, which has got plenty of flowers on it this year. But like a lot of productive trees, it can take a while before they begin to produce the fruit. Now we're coming to the last of my fruit trees on the swales and this one is the first of my fruit trees. It's a mariposa plant. It did have a little bit of curly leaf just on some of the leaves which I threw out early in the year and it's grown quite well. It did once again get trimmed by cows. They do a lot of trimming on one night out so it sounds like they're out a lot but they're not but they just go to town when they really when they do get out. There's plenty of fruit hiding in there, which is still green and yet to ripen. This one has split for whatever reason, and uh, I reckon a bird has knocked that one off the tree. Again, we've got some pest pressure. We've got bird damage there. Last year, the birds didn't find these trees at all, and I was hoping they would just leave them alone again. They have kind of nibbled on a few of these, but there's still plenty to enjoy. And now we move along to the final fruit tree in the swale, and that's my Satsuma plum. 
which has got the plums on it that we're going to harvest today. The birds have already enjoyed some, so I want to get in there and get my uh, harvest. Some of them will ripen off the tree, some are ready right now, but most I'll just sit on the counter until they ripen. Now, as you can see, this tree has been affected uh, with some pests. There's one of the culprits right there, and that's the, the cherry slug. It seems to affect pears, quinces, and uh, these stone fruit. So I'll be treating those again with some ash once I get these beautiful fruit off. While developing a food forest can take a number of years, it quickly becomes rewarding. I'll be taking this lot in for fresh eating and maybe we'll preserve the rest of these plums once they're ready. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.